am Pardu Gunam, CEO of Metaphor Data. Welcome to my talk on solving data discovery with modern metadata platform. In today's talk, I will be talk, covering about what is why is data discovery difficult and what is really a modern metadata platform, which is abbreviated to MMP. Why do you need an MMP? And if you need one, how do you build it? Quickly, quick introduction about myself. I am CEO and co-founder of Metaphor Data. In the past, I have worked, I've also worked on the metadata team at LinkedIn, building something similar, where we created a data hub with my teammates and started a company around that as well. Why is data discovery difficult? You have been hearing this term uh, quite a lot uh, these days, and uh, it, it's been around for a while. Uh, but why it has really become a challenge, especially these days? So we should blame that to the modern data stack. So the modern data modern data stack has helped to democratize various aspects of uh, of the data processing, especially on creation side and the query side and uh, moving on transformations, reporting. There are a wide variety of, especially the SaaS tools, all the way from like uh, Snowflakes, Databricks, Pytrans, et cetera, et cetera. These have like really helped uh, to kind of make it like extremely easy and uh, uh, extremely easy to kind of create any of these assets and like move them transform across across your data set in, within the company. Not it, which used to be just a data, core data team's job has, has been democratized across multiple uh, personas across the company. So this also brought in a lot of variety of data assets and like a lot of variety of use cases across your company, which is truly enabling your company to be uh, data driven. And one of the challenges that brought in was definitely data discovery, which is essential, which is boiling down to where, what, where do you find the right data to kind of like uh, solve your use case the right way. Even uh, just a, just which used to be this used to be just a big company's problem has also transformed into a small company's problem where there are thousands and thousands of data assets created uh, to drive completely the business uh, on based on the data. We see the data discovery problem, uh, discovery problems, uh, not just the data data teams problem as I, as I mentioned above. So if you go go through like all the data, all the data person, persons involved across the company, all the way from like data engineers who are enabling to kind of create the make, create and run the platforms, pipelines, etc. They're doing a lot of time spending, uh, a lot of times being spent on supporting uh, what what data, where is the data coming from, what does it mean. Uh, where is it going, observability aspects, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, if you consider the producers who are like the analysts or analytics engineers, or data scientists, or any of these personas, they just, they are they want to create uh, new assets or they, they want to create data artifacts based on trusted data. And they, they don't want to discover and like spend time searching for the right basis for their new, uh, for their data analysis. So, uh, and or not just that, all the artifacts, what they create, they are creating it for the business users. And how do you, how do they enable this uh, usage and like adoption across the company? Uh, most of the times they do spend uh, time on Slack or emails responding to the questions, answering about how to, how to use this thing. What does this table mean? What does this column mean? Could this transformation, um, is the transformation similar between uh, to column A and column B or a metric A and metric B, et cetera. And if you consider the business side of the users who are really consuming these data artifacts to solve the business, as we say, business data is uh, data exists to serve the business. Uh, there are all that they care about is can they actually trust the data to make the right decisions uh, in the business? If there is a bad report, if there is a bad data, or if, if something has changed, they would want to love to know before making that decision in that point of time. And if you see uh, moving to the data, head of data who are really uh, the owners of the data, like, own, like who are really the owners of uh, the data platforms inside the company, they have been making a lot of investments uh, both on the people side and resources side and platform side to kind of like enable the company data driven. And they, they keep wondering how much time are they, how much time are their teams like spending on support versus like effective usage of the data stack. And uh, is it really creating a positive ROI across like data investments inside the company? All these data discovery problems are a lot more common, especially with the modern data stack. Let's see uh, why 
why the existing tools doesn't really solve the problem. Uh, there are, uh, as you might have heard, data discovery is traditionally solved with data catalogs. And these data catalogs existed for more than two decades. And all the way from like Informatica's enterprise data catalogs to like the recent Alation ones or Calibra's, like any of these data catalogs which were which came through, a lot of these tools tend to be like more technical metadata. Uh, so solving mainly aimed at the, the core data teams and like slightly extended to the business like business side of the aspects as well. Primarily, they focused on like connecting all these data data systems together and connecting uh, connecting all the technical metadata to solve the data discovery. What we have done that same thing inside LinkedIn too, which I will be talking about in shortly, and that is that that alone is not enough. So let's take a look at what what is Metaphor's approach. If the technical uh, solving this as a technical problem is not just enough, yes, we do combine all the technical metadata uh, across the entire stack, all the way from like ETL data, where is how is the data being moved, where is it coming from, where is it going, and how fresh it is, observability data security data, what are the policies on it, privacy policies, governance policies, et cetera. We combine all that with wide wide variety of like social and business uh, aspects. Uh, for example, what business use cases is it solving for? Or uh, what is the technical grocery around it? Or who is using it? What is using it for? Is it more popular in my team or in a different team, et cetera? All these things combined together is going to give us not just discoverability, but a lot more visibility across the company, helps you to kind of like collaborate, reuse what is already created, et cetera, et cetera. So how did we do this, right? Like uh, what, what, we, what we usually call it as knowledge and uh, knowledge and complete context of data. So most of the technical catalogs in the past have uh, looked at like what are the dashboards, what are the metrics, or uh, what is the business grocery terms and connected to these things together. But when we went like, Few steps ahead, and also taken take, taken a look at like the biggest missing piece, which is the social and uh, the behavioral context. We looked into like what are the social Slack conversations happening around the data, what are the different use cases people are defining on the same column or the same data set or the same report, and what are the incident reports that happen. Essentially, bringing you all uh, the 360 degrees uh, view of like the data and the bringing in the complete context to kind of make that right decision and make it, make it extremely practical to find the data discovery in context of what you are uh, trying to solve. So if you combine, when we combine this technical metadata, business metadata, and behavior metadata together, what we create is called a metadata, modern metadata platform, MMP, which I will be talking a little bit in depth later. And we, not, we, we ingest all this data together and create the MMP. And it's also important, where do we serve? Traditionally, a lot of people, a uh, lot of companies have tried to solve it through a web app, uh, which, which is a, a definitely essential uh, to cater to a wide variety of users. But the modern workflows have also enabled, uh, has also like resulted in Slack or Teams being one of the top uh, con consumption areas as well. So beyond just sending notifications uh, to Slack or Teams, we have enabled a complete discovery workflow within the Slack, within these uh, chat chatting mechanism platforms. Uh, you can completely discover and uh, you can completely uh, uh, create content and push the content and search for it uh, and the, almost the entire discovery experience within this uh, chat platforms itself. Of course, uh, the next one is browser plugins. Uh, it is hard uh, to expect the business users to come uh, and look for uh, the right information inside uh, this uh, inside the web web applications or an explicit data catalog or a data discovery tool. That why not we push the important information directly to where they are consuming the data. So take examples of like Tableau dashboards or Looker dashboard where the business users are spending time. We directly push the important information through a browser plugin into the uh, right dashboard, uh, what they're already consuming. And uh, last but not least, uh, we have like complete API access, uh, which helps uh, the teams to kind of uh, bootstrap information or uh, make bulk changes or even like enable new set of use cases uh, on top of like all the MMP what we have built. So we have been talking a lot about MMP so far. Let's take a look at what is really an MMP, modern metadata platform. So before I jump in, I just wanna quickly talk about 
how it really started in, in, uh, on, in our own story at LinkedIn. So all the way from like 2016, uh, we started with a very traditional data catalog approach. Uh, and by the way, like when we started, we have no idea what is an MMP or we are not building, we didn't know that we are building towards one. So this was uh, purely a crawler based approach. We connected to all the data systems, pulled, uh, pulled the important data warehouse information, data sets, columns, lineage, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it is very monolithic app. It serves the data discovery, but it has the same set of problems what I have described uh, before. Then came the privacy loss and uh, like GDPR, CCPA, et cetera. So LinkedIn took a very interesting approach to say everything is meta metadata driven. And we moved uh, to our famous real, real time system, um, Kafka, Kafka push based approach, and like built it, uh, built it into a metadata, uh, still a metadata platform, but like very open uh service uh, trying to, but it's just made a real time. It helped us to get through like good privacy set of laws and like so solve that use cases. Then came 2019, we looked at all the use cases that are coming up across wide variety of like data systems. LinkedIn is uh, LinkedIn has a lot of, uh, has definitely advanced. Once we solved the privacy laws and use cases, uh, then, then we also took a look in 2019, a holistic, holistically all the use cases that are popping up across all the data platforms. LinkedIn has always uh, pushed towards data democratization, self-serve across like every single data platform that resulted uh, in the same set of data discovery problems popping up across like multiple platforms. When we took the holistic approach, we decided to create, take the what we have created so far and like make it very generic and create a data hub, uh, which is the V3 version uh, of this, this data catalog, made, it, made the application completely separate and the platform separate and that's what we call it as GMA, which stands for Generalized Metadata Architecture. So this is still push-based. Uh, the app operates on its own. In fact, like multiple apps started popping up uh, to serve the, from the same uh, same metadata platform. This is this is very similar to the modern metadata platform what what I've described uh, what I've been talking about so far. So in 2020, we I have we have also open sourced it. Thanks to LinkedIn's like open source culture, we have open sourced it under the name Data Hub, and uh, rest is history. In fact, uh, right now Data Hub is one of the most popular open source projects in this domain uh, at, across the industry. So, with that, with that being said, we have heard metadata so far in multiple places and what an MMP is. You can understand. Metadata can actually solve like a lot of use cases beyond data discovery, like data lineage, uh, observability, provenance, governance, privacy, uh, more famously these days like ML ops, all these things if you if you if you treat it as like metadata problems, you can try to solve uh, all these use cases uh, using metadata platform. But we have also seen like new paradigms uh, just to lay it out there. I'm not going to go in in depth to each one of these but you have come across data mesh or active metadata management, really taking it like one top notch to say that, hey, you should think about your data management through metadata and think of uh, organizing and governing it entirely through metadata. So if you consider, uh, just to put it in a different way, just to bring clarity, if you consider all the data stack and the producers on one side, uh, all the way from like data lakes to AI, ML models, features, et cetera, dashboards, everything, and the analytics engineers to data engineers, data scientists, everyone on one side. And if you put the consumers on the other side, which is like finance, business operations, customer success, product, everyone, what sits between them is really the modern metadata platform, which connects them together to kind of like collaborate, understand, and discover the data in the right way. So why do you need a modern metadata platform? Uh, don't we have like independent systems which are just having their own metadata, uh, which help them to operate? Why do we need a, a, an explicit system like an MMP altogether? So the especially a modern version of it, right? Two reasons. I will I will talk about like briefly about the complexity and scale. In in terms of complexity, every data system is ev evolving on its own and it has their own democratization needs, it has do, uh, their own model involvement. And uh, all these definitions and concepts, everything's proprietary, a lot of open source solutions, all this brought in like a lot of complexity 
in uh, handling the metadata across like any single system and uh, not 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 just even like that connecting it together to kind of the metadata graph is uh, quite quite complex and and the scale wise uh, yes you don't create so many data sets you don't create so many dashboards but there are changes happening to it all the time which leads to like every schema every column change or every definition change is considered as metadata change and soon the scales uh, uh, go higher up all the way to your uh, scale of your data itself. Which metadata, which used to be a small data problem, has turned definitely into this uh, into a big data problem with the advent of modern data stack. In fact, at LinkedIn, uh, being a metadata platform, there were uh, hundreds of millions of events which we would process in a day uh, just to make sure that the graph is up to date on real time. As I famously say. These days, metadata is as complex as your data platform itself, and it, re it re requires every respect what you what you give to your data platform itself and treat it the same way to make sure your data management is uh, done well. So, if you if we establish that yes, uh, you need a what an MMP is and what you need what do you need uh, an MMP to build? How do you do that? So. There are five characteristics I would talk about, uh, which are, uh, of course, like you, you must have heard this in building any real, any uh, great uh, data infrastructure system or a platform. But how does these things translate for an MMP? It has to be highly scalable, uh, dealing with like multiple model changes and dealing with like huge amounts of data. It has to serve and like uh, handle all those data changes. And it has to be highly reliable. Uh, of course, all the way from like real-time syncs to nightly syncs, a uh, huge amount of storage and uh, full change histories have to be like tracked, point in time, uh, point in time decisions and changes, everything has to be trackable. Uh, restorations have to be uh, have to be enabled. It has to be highly extendable, uh, not strongly typed APIs, backward type schema, schema changes. You're thinking about uh, connecting every single data system in, inside your company, all the way from like models to like APIs to data warehouse changes, everything together. So these schemas have to be like backward compatible and be available to kind of like evolve on their own. Of course, uh, rich APIs, uh, as you kind of build more and more use cases, uh, every team uh, has a different type of requirement. Every use case is different. You need to enable them with REST APIs, GraphQL, uh, and as I, as I compare it with the data itself, you can also expect like analyticals, APIs, uh, real-time system uh, requirements, et cetera. And the last but not least, ease of integration. As you are in, dealing with integrations with like every single platform and like every, every new use case of data, metadata lives everywhere. This metadata platform has to enable extremely ease of integration and like as low friction as possible with both process-wise and uh, technical aspects-wise. So now that we talked about, uh, uh, you, you can see how I'm building the bridge. Uh, we talked about data discovery with an MMP, and of course, uh, an example of like a great MMP, what we have built at Metaphor, how does that data, data discovery uh, really get solved, which is one of the use cases with a good MMP. I'll just you, you use this as an example. As you can see, uh, for a data discovery, there are three, uh, search is an important aspect. When you search, you as you can see in the screen, it's not just the data sets or dashboards. You, you should be able to kind of like bring context across every single asset inside your inside your company with respect to data. And you should have like rich filtering capabilities, both the technical signals wise, like database or schemas, governance and business aspects like govern tags, and also the behavior and social aspects like how how, pe how people are using the usage levels and how, the, how people are conversing the data, the social hashtags, et cetera, which is bringing in all together again, once again, the technical, the business, and the behavioral data together to kind of enable the search. So solving data discovery through documentation. Uh, you often, we, we, solve, we see the challenges that your documentation and your actual data catalogs live separately, which brings in a lot of, doc, which, which brings in a lot of challenges. Uh, and uh, no connection between the actual documentation and the data systems. Uh, and that's how th that's what we bring in uh, the rich uh, data asset pages, which is again a combination of all the descriptions which come from the platform, all the key signals which come automatically computed from your platforms, like 
how many, how, how, how much of uh, data does it have? How fresh is it? Uh, which DBT model is uh, behind this table, et cetera. And also the business things like uh, the, what tags are involved, what, who are the responsible people involved, and what documents does it connect to, but also the social signals like uh, how, how often is it used, what explicit use cases does it have, what deprecation notices it have, et cetera, all into like the single platform itself and serve uh, both the, the business documentation and the social documentation along with the technical documentation. And the last one which I'm talking about uh, is these days you you can some you can this is something which you can relate to as well. Uh, you have data team channels and support channels where a uh, lot of important information is shared across uh, multiple uh, team members. And uh, the only way to kind of retrieve it is to go through the Slack searches or team searches to kind of find uh, what was discussed in the past and what are the threads that are corresponding to this data. Uh, you would be lucky to kind of find the right data, uh, right right threads based on the search as what you use. But we have made it extremely easy. Uh, you can convert. You can find. Uh, you can convert. We have made this process extremely easy by enabling you to kind of convert any conversation, uh, important conversation, into a, a, a into a knowledge card, which can be which can be directly connected to your data system, a data asset. And not just that, when time arrives, uh, when the need arrives, you can uh, retrieve it and share it with your colleagues at a, with, with very low friction. And you, you can do all of this within the Slack itself. You can see there are a wide variety of knowledge cards we support and these uh, like, like use cases, how to use it, deprecation notices and incident reports uh, on what has happened, quality changes, et cetera, which kind of helps you to kind of like get like full context of your data. With this, let me summarize my talk. Uh, we started with why data discovery is hard, especially with modern data stack and data democratization, uh, uh, enable, enabling like a lot of new challenges as well across multiple players and assets. And why do you need an MMP? Uh, how can it bring in various business and organization challenges and how it can solve holistically wide variety of use cases? And why do you need an explicit MMP, the com complex and scale involved? and how we need to treat uh, a metadata same with the same respect as your data. And if we once we are convinced, how do you build a great MMP? All the five characteristics, scale, reliability, extensibility, APIs, and integration. And at the last, uh, we also talk an example of like how we really solve data discovery with Metaphor, which is built uh, as a modern metadata platform, uh, searching, documentation, collaboration across uh, across your multiple stakeholders, and like multiple platforms. And with that, this is j just to reiterate, data discovery is one of the primary use cases for MMP, uh, but there are a wide variety of use cases we are going to enable. So with that, I'm going to conclude my talk. Thanks for thanks for attending this talk. And if you want to uh, give it a try on your on yourself, go to metaphor.io slash try. Thank you. <laughs>